So boys, here we are. One year and eight months after starting, we've officially hit a thousand subscribers. To celebrate, I wanted to reminisce my journey and how far I've come from being a soulless, lost, degenerate boy all the way to a man in a few short years. I'm also going to detail the battles behind the screen that you don't see, like my battle with anxiety and mental health, my battle with alcoholism, my battle with spiritual warfare, my battle with loneliness. And I hope by exposing the reality of what it takes, it can help you in your personal journey and contextualize the weight of the mission at hand. I've split this story into six chapters chapters of diligence. Enjoy. But before I tell the story, I'd like to thank every single person that's ever interacted with my content in any format, be it positive or negative. Supporters and haters alike, as it all helped shape me not only as a YouTuber, but also a man. But I especially want to thank those who supported me despite the controversial opinions, spontaneous content changes, and in particular the terrible jokes. I will not forget you gentlemen who showed me love. And although relatively few in number, it felt like millions to me. And I expect soon enough it will be. But you day ones I will never forget. Now, enough of the soppy shit. I don't want to just thank you gentlemen for your support. I want to give you something back. But to look forward, sometimes one must look back. So this is the story of the Patrick Lochran slash Concerge YouTube channel. I want to rewind time to the 4th of February 2023. Before two Wembley stadiums full of people have viewed this diligent face. When I was a young boy who was lost, yet ate to be found. My first video. Right boys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first video. Um, I'd also like to say hello to myself, probably about five, ten years in the future. You know, sitting on a beach, got a lame wife to your side, you know, chiseled body like a Greek god. Uh, and also hope you find a way to grow a bigger car. Chapter 1. The First Leap Around this time, I was a wolf that had been force-fed vegan meat my whole life. Yet for the first time, I tasted blood. For years leading up to this, I've been a failure. I always knew I was capable and meant for something, but the traditional route of education just led me to fail and fail again. My brain was meant to shape, not be shaped. And Western society, like with every young man, has tried to force a wolf into a sheep-shaped mold. And I didn't fit. Emasculation, insecurity, processed foods, drugs, alcohol, and lack of guidance screwed the mental prison of anxiety tighter and tighter in my brain. This increased to the point where I used to hide in cubicles to avoid social interaction and every day despite no external threat I suffered in permanent fight or flight mode. Life was miserable and I was bitterly lonely but I learned to operate on my own somewhat. I proceeded to scrape through an education doing the bare minimum of work I hated purely because I had no other option and I somehow scraped my way into a bottom barrel university. Drinking and smoking weed became a daily occurrence and my health both mental and physical continued to decline. I even lost my sex drive at age 19 the hormonal peak of my life. The only thing I had in these times was a mask I'd put on. I mean, better than nothing, I guess. This shallow, aimless existence exacerbated and exacerbated, and I was a shell of a human, really. But still, when the afters fell quiet at 8am, or in the moments of silence before reaching my phone after waking up at 7pm, a voice, so frail it was like a distant gust of wind, whistled gently that I was destined for more than this, before an impulsive dopamine onslaught scattered it into a thousand pieces. But that voice regathered and grew louder, then I scattered it again, then it regathered again, and then I drowned it out again. But then I remember one day after a drinking session I woke up early, staring up at the ceiling, unable to sleep. To my left was a girl who, due to my lack of sex drive, I had zero attraction to, and to my right was my messy room, littered with processed food wrappers, ashtrays and dirty clothes. Rock bottom and then the voice came back is this life then is this who i am is this all i'm gonna be i realized then that i hated myself and who i was i was desperately anxious and insecure and in my 20 years of existence i had achieved nothing instinctively reaching for my phone to drown out the voices i stopped suddenly my hand hovering inches away from my phone but then it retreated and instead for the first time I addressed the voices. No, I thought. This is not who I'm going to be. The time was 6am and truthfully, then and there, got my clothes on and I went for a fucking run. Although I was brutally hungover, my lungs burned and my muscles felt like they weighed a ton, I was elated because for the first time in my 20 years of existence, I felt fucking alive. I had been introduced to the greatest gift man possesses agency over his destiny. From there I progressed. It was far from smooth sailing, yet still my hand clutched the rudder white knuckled. Truthfully, I have to credit men like Andrew Tate and Hamza because they truly taught me lessons that my western emasculating indoctrination swerved around without a thought. A glimpse of the light outside of Plato's cave not only illuminated my potential destiny, but simultaneously darkened the millions that still remained in the cave with not a thought about the light that awaited them outside it. And at uni seeing hundreds of men falling over 
and over again into the same traps that had previously ensnared me. It frustrated and saddened me. So I thought, why not try and help them? Fuck it. Let's make a YouTube channel. But here comes the first leap. Now, I've actually been asked this recently. How did you have the balls to make the initial leap to go on YouTube? Because I know a lot of people are scared to post their first reel, their first video, and it comes down to this. Are you going to let fear of judgment get in the way of your destiny? Plain and simple. Also, I frequently reminded myself of how small a spec I was in the magnitude of the game. We're one in seven billion on a spinning rock, which is a speck in the magnitude of the universe, which as far as we know has no end. Even in our numerically insignificant lifespan, the judgment of others who may or may not be in our lives a month from now, let alone a decade from now, is extremely insignificant. So it's extremely illogical and even, quite frankly, cowardly to let this judgment stop you. The less you care about other people's opinions, the better. And those who judge you harshly or don't support you in trying to make something of yourself shouldn't be in your life anyway. So it's a good litmus test in that regard. Unluckily, I knew better than most that the deafening roar of anxiety was built upon a foundation of lies. And I knew that I couldn't let these lies restrict me. The irrational spiraling fears of judgment, although seemingly terrifying and all important at the moment, were truly in significant in the long run. So I said, fuck it. Let's get the camera out. A bit like that stream of like Destiny. Well, maybe not quite like him actually. Chapter 2. The Lone Wolf. And those that were seen to be dancing were thought to be insane by those that could not hear the music. That's a Nietzsche quote that summarises this chapter perfectly. So if you heard the quote, just skip the chapter now. No, I'm joking, don't do that. Like in Plato's cave, a world of possibility opened up for me as soon as I ventured out. Yet my mate still in the cave just couldn't see it. The issue is, I wanted more for myself, but I was in second year university. At university, you're literally seen as weird if you don't do illegal drugs, right? Meanwhile, I had quit smoking weed and I was banging in cold showers and meditating like <laughs> you see that's the issue when you go against the grain naturally you're probably gonna have to do it alone and that takes strength my mates all just smoked weed played fifa all day drank all night and occasionally went gym and i'm not judging them too harshly because that's exactly what i used to do but they just didn't get what life could be like outside of the cave which was understandable but very frustrating and it meant i had to venture forth in solitude a quote from my journal poetically summarizes this I think I might be gay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's the wrong, wrong, wrong page. Right, right. Here we are. 11.41, Saturday 6th of May, 2023. Staying true to yourself in this world sadly means straying from the wolf pack, and the lone wolf cannot survive for long. I still have strong wolves in my pack, but they have weaker vision than myself, so how can I possibly point out a moose from afar if they cannot see? See, in the modern day, the Lone Wolf chapter is an important yet unavoidable chapter for anyone who wants more than what they've currently got. This is because the norm in the modern day is weak, it's lazy, it's entitled, it's depressed, it's addicted, it's mindless, it's unhealthy. So straying from the norm if you want anything out of life is an inevitability. You have to do it. People are going to look at you funny and of course you're going to get judged, you're going to get doubted. But at the end of the day, those people aren't trying to go where you're trying to go. So it doesn't really matter. Honestly, with young men, we've been ostracized, indoctrinated and poisoned and been the victim of many a propaganda campaign, I really can understand why so many men are just turned off to the world, most of which know not the insidious poison that seeps through their veins. So as a consequence, it's rare you find men that are actually switched on, who have seen the light in Plato's cave. However, in the future, I'm optimistic that this will not be the case. I can feel a storm brewing with young men at the present moment, but regardless, unless you're lucky, a lone wolf chapter is somewhat unavoidable. And although not ideal, I think there is merit in learning how to operate independently as a man. Because ultimately, being a man, everything Thing has to come from you. Well, and God, but you see my point. So alone, but driven, on I continued to grind and refine my craft. I got better at video creating and ultimately learned the game by trying, failing, trying, failing, trying, and failing. But I improved every time. I realized at this point that if I uploaded every single week and in every single video, I improved just a tiny bit. If I didn't give up, success was genuinely a mathematical inevitability. Throughout this period with timeless classics, like I tried a dopamine detox for a week, life-changing. <laughs> And how to eat what you want and not get fat. Right boys, so let me put this flexible dieting in kind of like a real world example for a bit of context, right? So you got a fat night out, mate. Fat night out, you wake up absolutely hanging. You're probably woken up next to a three as well, but we'll ignore that part, it's not relevant to the story. You know, we'll, we'll leave it, we'll leave it out. Again life-changing. I mean, in the span of three uploads, how many times could a man's life change? But anyway, a dark, cold storm was brewing, and a question kept orbiting my cranium. Who's gonna carry the boats? So this is how you level up. I know there's a whole bunch of people with that right there 
That fires me up. That makes me fucking happy what you just said. That brings joy to my life right there. Why? Because I know there's so many people that have the ability and just refuse to get off that couch. Refuse to study a few more hours. Refuse to go deeper, to go further. And that's what I gain the advantage. Chapter 3, Goggins Mode. Around this period, a diligent man named David Goggins entered my life non-homosexually. This led to an explosion of maniacal discipline and the best period of content I think I've produced in my career. I also shaved my head at this point. A drunken decision granted, but a decision all the same. And aside from the occasional bout of degeneracy, I, I fucking grinded. A memory which summarizes this period perfectly is one time when I was drinking heavily around my mate's house, which I did still do at this point, much to the annoyance of my inner Goggins. The inner Goggins in question kept on getting louder and louder and louder until one point I just said, fuck it, I'm running home. And the boys laughed. Yet my expression remained unchanged. You see, it was 4 a.m., minus freezing temperatures. I was 10 kilometers of motorway away from my house and I was also stupidly drunk and probably high as well. So the boys changed conversation, yet my expression remained unchanged. The motor fizzled down and I started lacing up my Air Max 97s and changing into a shorts and t-shirt. The boys laughed again, yeah, good one, mate. My expression remained unchanged. But then I said my goodbyes and the humor in their eyes turned to shock and even borderline concern, but my expression remained unchanged. So I hit the tarmac with Air Max 97s as running shoes, in shorts and t-shirt and freezing temperatures at 5 a.m. And my expression finally changed. I was smiling. Uh, I remember only stopping once on that drunken run home, and that was because I fell flat on my face. But I scrambled to grab my bag and water bottle. In fact, the reason why this water bottle doesn't have this handle is because it broke off when I fell over. Yeah, good joke. Anyways, I rushed to keep on running, ignoring the blood trickling down my leg. Again, once I arrived back for sunrise at 6 a.m., like my run before at the start of my journey, I felt fucking alive. Like I said, my content at this point in time was, I think, the pinnacle of my YouTube career. And looking back, I should have stuck with it. I started picking up some traction with videos like how I stopped smoking weed. So let's put it this way. The more I smoked weed, the more I had to claim I was just bulking. Our porn is castrating you. You know, the economy's in the mud. No one wants to raise a child in a world of £10 pints of Fosters, mate. No, it's not happening, is it? And best of all, I trained neck for 30 days and this is what happened. Then, my uncle introduced me to neck training. Which is a video I'm still yet to top and currently sits at 50k views. Mate, that was a fucking banger. I actually love that video. Oh yeah, I also decided to run a marathon on a random Sunday because, quote unquote, the game commanded it. Yeah, well, I mean, what can you do? If, it, if the game commands you, what are you going to do? You're going to say no? <laughs> Come on, mate. So things were going well, but then my own philosophy turned to shoot me in the foot. I was still improving every single video, and due to my success, I now recently changed what I defined as a numerically successful video. So I raised my standards for success. But the problem was, this improvement in video quality translated to an increased amount of time to make the video. And if a video that had taken me days or weeks to make flopped, it fucking hurt. Genuinely, I'd say like making one of those videos was probably the equivalent to like a 6,000 word essay. Like imagine getting a shit mark back on that. It, it's not fun. Then realizing you just gotta do it all again. Again. The final mental straw was the video, A Day in the Life of David Goggins. That video not only took some of my soul to film, no pun intended, like, that was such a fucking hard video to film, by the way, that was unbelievable. Yeah, like, imagine having to run a half marathon at 5am, but you've also got to film everything. And then like three other three gym workouts, bro. Watch it and you can just see the pain in my face. But then on top of that, editing the video on my ancient fucking laptop, it's like World War II era, took about 100 hours as well. Like no joke, at least 100 hours. And then the video flopped and got like 400 views, which in accordance with my now elevated standards was shit. So consequentially, I lost my drive and I went back to my hometown Nottingham for Easter and unfortunately fell back into my old ways of degeneracy and alcoholism. In short, I fell off. And um, let me tell you the truth. Chapter four, a man of discipline. I'll be wanking four times a day. This swaying from the path of my purpose built up resentment inside of myself. Previously, the distant voices that whispered I could do better whenever I strayed from my purpose were now a booming chorus whenever I acted against my purpose. By means of iron diligence, I'd given my soul a taste of purpose and it was not going to let me slip that easily. As my mental health once again declined and my self-hatred once again built and built, I started intuitively strategizing my return as I knew it was my only path because once a man has seen the light, 
he can never live in the dark again. I knew I thrived off external accountability, and yet I needed to reduce the quality and my focus on numbers if I wanted to be consistent with YouTube. So I theorized a series called Road to the Most Disciplined Man, the premise of which was essentially an unedited blog twice a week, in which I'd been forced to push myself up the spiral of discipline. And also I just talk about whatever interested me in the moment. So at least I'd offer some value. So I got to it. Now I'm in my third and final year of university. So I realized that soon enough, the depressing reality of adulthood awaited me. And I had to make this work soon if I was going to make it work at all. The grind begun and several episodes in, after the same cycle that had haunted my existence for the past few years, of drinking, then hating myself, then drinking again, was snipped right through. And I committed to three months of sobriety. The main reason I was able to do this while still going out was simple. I made a promise to God. My productivity skyrocketed. I was pounding out video after video, but the numbers still weren't coming through. But this time, I didn't let it get to me, and I kept on putting out content. My favourites being the all-time classics such as The Fellowship of the Ring going to war with iron. And of course, I was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I learned a lot in this period, and although the numbers didn't, I grew a great deal as a man, which is infinitely more important. Truthfully, I was fucking dialed in. But at this point, I realized something. I needed to make money. So, I began planning a business. I mean, obviously it's gonna make me loads of money. Like, it will make me loads of money. Chapter five the unsuccessful entrepreneur. So I saw a gap in the market, estrogenics. I'm sure plenty of you know what they are. They're essentially chemicals which are everywhere in our environment, which we ingest on a regular basis. And they have many negative health implications, namely reduced testosterone, increased risk of cancer, etc, etc. And despite this profound effect on our health, no one's really talking about it. I also thought I'd integrate this message by means of short form content in order to reach the widest platform possible and attempt to educate the masses on a niche topic. And off the back of that, set a product to make a bit of money. I decided to put YouTube on the back burner and focus on Instagram and TikTok, only really uploading on YouTube when I wanted to rant about something. However, things with Concierge didn't quite go to plan. In short, I made the website, I was pumping out content, I got a product to sell which was a water bottle. In fact, I even wrote a whole fucking book. It's a brilliant fucking book, by the way. I put a link to it in the description. But as I mentioned, it didn't go to plan because A, firstly, I haven't even managed to sell a single product yet. It's my fault to be fair. I never properly marketed the products. And it's very difficult to market products off of short form. Like you just can't build the connection that you get with long form content at all. And the audience you get is just far less diligent. Like it's just TikTok doom dopamine scrollers. Like plus B, I frequently suffer with shadow banning because of the controversial nature of my content, you know, naturally with it being the truth and all. And Instagram and TikTok didn't like that. I also made the mistake of following it with my personal account. So now many of my old friends, especially women, dislike me a lot. So naturally I was getting reported a lot. That being said, I was still banging a decent amount of views on TikTok and occasionally Instagram, but I wasn't making any money and I wasn't having the strongest impact I believe I can have. Also, I've been socially ostracized by many for actually voicing my opinions, but game's a game, man. Like I'd rather be a loner that tells the truth than a coward that everybody likes every single day of the week. It's a shame most men choose the latter these days though. But on the flip side, by being more genuine, I not only pushed many people away, but I also attracted in many like-minded men. So yeah, my first business didn't make any money, but it helped me attract men. But at this point, I've now graduated with my useless degree and I've moved back home to Nottingham. But the good news is my lone wolf arc was beginning to fade as I met more and more guys who've seen the outside of Plato's cave, just like me. Thankfully so, as the lone wolf always dies. Now I'm still very much unique in my way of thinking, but I now have the luxury of conversing with diligent men freely without fear of judgment. Something every man needs, yet is getting more and more scarce these days. I also do have a small, yet diligent, community on my Instagram, which I do enjoy interacting with. Quality over quantity, as they say. They do indeed say that. But regardless, this initial failed business venture has taught me a great deal, primarily about business and the workings of it, how to deal with dozens of TikTok retards hating you at once. And it also helped me refine my message and educate myself as a man. There is so much growth in failure, man, honestly. But as my funds depleted and depleted and the roof of my overdraft got closer and closer to my head, I needed to take some form of action urgently. Chapter six. The mission. Like a story that's still being wrote, this brings me to the present day. What my current mission is. So YouTube and business aside, recently I've been developing exponentially as a man. I've been on an expedition, video coming soon by the way. I'm learning how to fight, which is fucking mental to be honest. Like I did sparring for the first time a couple weeks ago. Mate, it was fucking insane. The growth is unparalleled. I've been building my relationship with God, which is arguably the most important part of a man's life. I've been honing my people skills. I eat healthy. I don't drink. I got a job doing bar work and another in construction 
Ireland, so I've got some form of income keeping me afloat. I'm also going traveling with one of my boys soon, so I'm gassed for that. And I've also been educating myself about the world and its workings, so I'm more knowledgeable than ever before. So all in all, I've been grabbing life by the balls, and I'm stronger than ever before. Now, I know the level I'm at is minuscule compared to my potential, but honestly, against all odds, and despite Western society's best attempt to sabotage this process, I'm finally becoming a man, and spiritually, I feel it within me. Given that two years ago, I was an anxious shell of a boy whose only thought outside of his self-inflicted mental prison was about his next bout of alcohol abuse, who didn't even have a sex drive, who hated himself and had no direction. I'm proud of how far I fought to climb. God willing, of course. But this begs the question, gentlemen, what next? So, I'd like to announce my official return to YouTube, gents. But we aren't doing some low-quality vlogs or regurgitated self-improvement videos that no one watches. To put it bluntly, we're coming for Satan. You see, I've spent much time reflecting and I've realized none of this is about me or you or men or women or right wing, left wing, black, white, brown. It's not about masculinity or estrogenics either. It's about good versus evil. That's all it's ever been about. And now I see the good and evil in the world clearer than ever before. I have a role to play in God's will, a duty to the truth. And I intend to fulfill that duty regardless of what it costs me. Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I think us men spend our lives waiting for a war to march to, only to stop and realise that one has been occurring all along, the battlefields of which have been raging all around us. Great invisible swords clanging silently together, spears snapping on shields for no one to hear or see. And it's about time I joined the fight myself. The universe is incomprehensibly vast, and I know relatively nothing about it. One thing I do know is that the divine whisper of a voice that stayed by my side in the darkest of nights like the North Star now burns brighter than ever before, illuminating my path to spiritual war. On, I must march. Gentlemen, thank you from the bottom of my heart for a thousand subscribers. Until death, gents, arm yourself.